Target Field in Minneapolis. MLB The Show has action out of the AL Central. It's the Detroit Tigers taking on the Minnesota Twins. First pitch coming your way next. So just about set now and towing the slab. Pablo Lopez. What do we have on him? Well, that 12 to 6 curveball explodes out of the hand. And because he's able to throw the high fastball at the top of the strike zone for a strike, hitters commit to that pitch. And before they know it, they're swinging over the top of that curveball. Here's the left fielder, Riley Green. Fastball for a strike. And we're underway. That one missed. Wait. Off the ball mark there. And yeah, that's ball two. Pablo Lopez will deliver. Spoils that one and it remains two and two. The pitch. Swings and blasts one deep to left center. A dive and he can't haul it in. The throw into second and that's a leadoff double. Put a really nice balanced swing on it and when you can rope one into the gap like that you're thinking extra bases from the first couple of steps out of the box and he'll feel real good about that. Spencer Torkelson up now for the Tigers. First offering misses badly for ball one. Wouldn't that's chase up, that time. Runner in scoring position, nobody out. And we're just getting started here in the top of the first. Next pitch oh. is outside. There's the strike. Great back and forth and that at bat. He had to play off some really close pitches and somehow Boogie found a way to keep the bat on his shoulder right there. I'll tell you right now, I couldn't have done it. Now here is Zach McKinstry. And that one missing low. And batter waits. Got him looking. That's a strike. Two on, one out. Kerry Carpenter up now for the Tigers. That one pulled foul. Well, all eyes on the double play ball in this spot. No better way to get out of this inning. and fires. 
On the ground, a short could be two. Castro to it. second. What a double play that was. Getting over. They made it look easy, but it started with a nice feed to the second baseman from the shortstop. Perfect turn, and they're out of this jam. Back in Minnesota, and today's starter, Casey Mize. It's got that splitter, and it's a pitch that swings and misses, calm fast, and they come often. Very difficult to pick up out of his hand. And yeah, the batter now, Edward Julian. The second base. For whatever reasons, this is a hitter that performs better in night games. We'll see what he brings in this one. That misses. And it's one to know. Tap to first. Torkelson. Tosses to the pitcher covering the bag. They get him, but it was pretty close. And now we take a peek at the Twins lineup. A really frustrating showing for them in their last game. Lots of traffic on the bases, but they left a ton of runners on base. Couldn't cash in their chances, Chris. They had plenty of chances. There's nobody to blame it on but themselves offensively. They just did a poor job converting in those situations. You have to figure out what's your plan going to be. Maybe watch some tape from the last game. One. Make the adjustment. So if you get those opportunities in this one, you've got a much better chance of scoring some runs. One out, base is empty. Now Ball, one and outside. one. for a strike. The wind and the pitch. Upstairs. <laughs> Foul ball, another 2-2 two -two upcoming. And that Full just count. misses. Really good take, especially with two strikes. One down, base is empty. Foul. We'll see another payoff pitch. Kicks and deals. Fouled off again. And it remains three and two. Ninth pitch of the at bat due next. Outside, and that Take is ball base. four. That's a great at bat. He saw a lot of pitches and earned a walk. Well, that's a nice job of grinding out that at bat. Saw a lot of pitches and ends up drawing the walk. Very gritty. Here's Alex Kirilov. Inside, just missed. Swing and a miss as he was late that time. Well, he just threw that one, fastball one. by him, elevated, and if you're not looking up in that location. And there he goes. Swing and a ball lined out towards center. Meadows snags it on the run. Batting four. Four. The center field. Byron. Byron. Buxton. Here's Byron Buxton. He is very much your typical power hitter. I'd say he falls into the three true outcomes category. But we've seen more and more of that lately. The ability to drive the ball to slog is getting heavily favored over any discipline or strikeout concerns. Next pitch is outside. Oh, 
just missed. Jeffers off of first with two away. That one fouled off two and two. Two outs. Still two and two after the foul ball. And another oh. ball. 3 2, two out, Down one on four. first. A lot of movement in the infield. Hitters got to stay focused on the pitch. Gets a piece and it stays alive. We finished one inning here in Minneapolis. No score. Back in target field. Here's Gio Urshela. The third base is number 13. Urshela Gio. measures six feet Urshela. even, hitting fifth in today's lineup. And he's a native of Colombia. Lopez back to work. Hey, up. Oh, and one. The pitch. Slice to right, and it goes oh, just foul. On the ground, right That's side, foul and foul ball. Seen, but that certainly got away with the location there. Point. You'll sometimes, as a hitter, when you're down in the count, you're so focused on a pitcher painting the black, and you just get a wow. little bit locked up on something down the heart of the plate, not expecting it, and it just kind of freezes you. One down, base is empty. This one high in the air to left center. Larnick snags it for the second out. Bobby Baez digs in right side. Rips one to right, and that's a fair ball. Around first, heading for two. Throw, and it gets away. Baez around second. Clearly that was a solid double all the way. Nice swing of the bat right there, but that just can't happen on defense. Getting the ball back into the infield. You've got to make a decent throw your infielders can handle. Just gave him an extra 90 feet for free. Parker Meadows up now for the Tigers. That clips the inside corner for a strike. Two outs and a runner at third. Here at the top of the second. That one hooked foul. that time tough to take a two strike change up they just missed they get frozen rips that one to right no trouble here puts it away for the out and that's the third out one left for Detroit we'll go to the bottom of the second no score For the Twins, Trevor Larnick. Trevor Larnick. Trevor. 
the pitch. That's a strike. It's 0 and 1. Strike at the bottom of the zone. I understand you want to try to gauge that guy's fastball, but you also have to be aggressive and ready to hit in your zone. Now you're in a tough spot. That one hits the two. dirt. One and two to count. And a foul ball. He stays alive. He swings and hits a fly ball. Center field. Hauls it in for the out. One away. Batting good. The third base. So up next for Minnesota, Jose Miranda. And the first pitch misses for ball one. One ball, no strike. And a good no, idea. Out. Our umpire for this one, Freddie Ferguson. A consistent umpire by all accounts. Yeah, I think the book on him is that he's not necessarily by the book with his strike zone. But once you figure out where he's calling strikes, you can pretty much count on him to stay with that throughout the game. Whoa, whoa. That one misses, but it's 3 0. Chris, do players ever change their approach in meaningful ways based on who's umpiring, or is it good to just be aware of tendencies so you're yeah. not that surprised? I'd say the latter because pitchers got to pitch to her strengths regardless. The hitters got to hit to his strength. So you're aware of it, but you have to just hunt for what you can handle. 3 1, oh, and he couldn't come up with it. Well, he tried to nibble right there and just missed his spot. Hitter that didn't offer that at that it. That now he has somebody to worry about over at first. Yeah. Run around at yeah. first with yeah. one gone. This is Willie Castro. in a strike to the left-handed hitter. Nothing, nothing here in the bottom of the second. That yeah. one finds the zone. That strike two. Oh, two. Quickly into an 0-2 count. Both pitches were down in the zone. I think you set your sights a little bit higher because you'll have a tendency to chase if you look down in that area. And the righty deals. Gets a piece and it stays 0 and 2. And the right hander deals. Ground ball left side could be two. There's one and that's two. Nothing doing for the offense that time. We head on now to the top of the third. We're tied. Nothing, nothing. in Minnesota. Here's the power hitting catcher, Jake Rogers. Jake Rogers. Lopez back to work. And that one is lifted in the air. Buxton sizing it up. No trouble here. Puts it away for the out. One down. Back to the top of the lineup. Here's Riley Green. Led this game off with a double, but they weren't able to drive him in. And there's the strike. In the air, left field. Larnick under this one. Makes the grab. Two down. Now the first base. Spencer. Spencer Torkelson up now for the Tigers. Worked a walk at his first trip to the plate. Late with the swing there. I think he was sitting off speed. Oh, and 
into center. Buxton moves under it. And that is that. Home half of the third coming up. No score. And welcome back to the ballpark. Set for the bottom of the third. Manuel Margot up to the plate. The right hander back to work. And there's the strike. First good strike right there for him. He's going to have to do that consistently if he's going to give any length to his skipper. And that one lifted in the air center field. In position. Falls it in for the out. Here's Christian Vasquez. Just no, missed. Next offering is in for a strike. Late on that fastball. One and two, the count. Got him oh. looking for the K. Fastball to letters, throws him for strike three. Frustrating end to the at bat for the hitter, yeah, and I'm sure that's going to sit on him for a little while. Edward. You want to be ready to hit the fastball. Sometimes Ooh, yeah. you can overthink things, and I think that was the case right there. That first offering is fouled off. In there at the knees. Keeps the at bat going with a foul ball. Left hand hitter waits. One, two. Two out spaces empty. Just no, that misses. Miss, that's the ball. And it's two and two. It's a good take. The 2-2 two -two ah! gets a check swing. Now an appeal to third. And he won around. Not an easy call there, but that puts an end to the inning. Twins are set down 1-2-3. And we are still scoreless. Back at target field. Start of the fourth. To the batter now. Zach McKinstry. McKinstry. The right-hander back to work. That's through there for a strike. That one missing ball. inside. One ball, one strike. Yeah. In there at the knees. One and two. The line of the pitch. Hanson misses. It's a strikeout. Get him out of front, which isn't easy to do against a hitter like this, known for using the entire field. Just couldn't sit back long enough on that one. Next is the Tigers' DH, Kerry Carpenter. Wouldn't That's chase that ball. time. Yeah. Swing and a miss as he was late. One and one. All tied up, top half of inning number four. And that one fouled off. Yeah. Lopez gets the swing and a miss. Two quick outs here in the top of the fourth. 
Beat him inside on that last pitch, and when you look back at the pitch sequence on that strikeout, it's pretty interesting. Away, in, away, and then back in again. He really commanded both sides of the plate right there, and that makes it pretty tough to get comfortable in the box. Giorgella steps in. Caught looking his first time up. That's in there. Strike one. Well, he's been incredibly efficient in this one. First pitch strike percentage over 70%. That's well above league average, and that's what's allowed him to pitch well up until this point. Right field down the line, and that one slices foul. Two down, nobody on. And down on strikes. And good work there as he gets a 1 2 3. Tigers are shut down there. Still no score. And we're back. Ready to go. Bottom four. Now it's the Twins DH. Brian Jeffers. The wind of the pitch. Right down the shoot. And it's 0 and 1. Lifted in the air, right center field. On the move to the alley. He's got it. And a quick out, number one. Every day during number batting three, practice, three, these outfielders three, get about 10 three, minutes three, of balls in the three, gaps. Three, they practice this, and when the game comes, they make the play perfectly. So up next, Alex Kirilov. 0 for 1 so far. And there's a foul ball. The Twins hitless so far in the game. Next offering one one. upstairs. Way high. Oh, that's up. To the right side. McKinstry. Oh, the throw is over his head. And this ball is going to wind up out of play. Just looks like he pushed that throw. Not a lot of distance, so something definitely broke down mechanically. Sometimes the shorter throws can be harder to make. You don't see many high throws from second baseman over the first because they usually don't have to put much on it. Byron Buxton, the next twin up to hit. And fouled off. One out and a runner at second. We're here in the bottom of the fourth. Up the middle. Now the throw to first on the run. That takes care of Buxton. Here's Trevor Larnick. 0 for 1 with a fly out to center. And this is a big opportunity for him to pick up his teammate right here. That one is absolutely belted into the corner, but foul. Two outs. No score yet, but a runner at third with two away. Next offering is in for a strike. He's been able to go inside as well as outside, effectively working both sides of the plate in this at bat. And a swing and a miss. Huge strike out there. One left for Minnesota, and we're still knotted at zero. Ready now for the fifth yeah. inning, and here is Wenzel Perez. Now the right-hander ready to go. Still no score. Harris goes 5 feet 11 inches, 205 pounds, and he was born in the Dominican Republic. Line drive, base hit. Man aboard on the leadoff single. 
I could watch base hits like that yeah, one yeah, all yeah. day long, yeah. and so could every hitting coach in the league. Just a nice oh, line drive into center field. And now they've got some speed on first, so we'll see if they try to get him into motion. The batter now, Javier Baez. Doubled in his first A.B. Ground ball could be two. Flips it. Yep. One at second. And they turn the double play. I think four, six, three double plays like that are way tougher than these guys make it look sometimes. Because no matter how you do it, the feed from the second baseman is a tough one. That's where footwork really comes into play. But right there, very well done. And stepping in is the speedy Parker Meadows. Up the middle. On the run, sends it over to oh, first. Okay. And he beats the throw. Shows off the wheels right there. An infield single. So, man aboard. And next up for the Tigers, Jake Rogers. He's 0 for 1. Over oh, to first, and he's safe. Base runner with a one-way lead right there. All he's trying to do is get a look at the pitcher's move. Had no intent of stealing on that pitch. That one oh. is upstairs. 1-0. Right-hander kicks deals. Swing and a ball popped up. Castro moving under it. Makes the grab and that'll end the inning. Tigers leave one. Halfway through this one. Still no score. Bottom of the inning. And now for the Twins. Jose Miranda. Third baseman. Miranda. The wide to kick the pitch. Right, right through there for a strike. Well, these twins showing great discipline at the plate, and patience definitely seems to be the name of their game in this one. They haven't produced a run yet, but the pitch count for the starter is starting to climb, so they're hoping that starts to pay off soon. And he deals. Ground ball up the middle. Baez fires over to first. And the leadoff man set down in their half of the field. And next for Minnesota, Willie Castro. He's over one. Swinging a foul straight back. No, there's a pitch we haven't seen in a while. It's going to be tough on the hitters if he can mix that in whenever he wants. Base is empty one away. Last half of inning number five. And downstairs. Oh, that's, low. that's the ball. downstairs oh. good spot there but didn't get the strike at the knees and doesn't seem too convinced by the call out there in the mound as he tries to get a better sense of the umpire strike zone and the pitch got him looking for the strikeout called strike three and a fastball up in the zone now here's Manuel Margo Margo That one ran ball. inside, almost got him. Straightened him wow. up a little bit. Ground ball, left side. Fires over to first. And the Twins go one, two, three. Twins retired in short order. Sixth inning coming up, still nothing on the scoreboard.
back in Minnesota. Now the left fielder, Riley Green. Riley Green. Lopez back to work. That one misses. One and oh. Close pitch there, and he's kind of wondering where it missed. You know, getting a feel for each umpire's strike zone is something that pitchers and hitters really have to think about and work on from game to game and sometimes from at bat to at bat. Deep drive down the line. Foul ball. With a yellow look excited on that fastball. Got to think to yourself, you want to stay up the middle. That way if you're a little bit early, you hit it out of the ballpark, a little late, opposite field not. strike zone but he found a spot that the umpire is going to at least for now allow him to get that call so hitters are going to have to make an adjustment but pitchers are going to learn from those things and really try to exploit them if they can Torkelson up to the plate for the third time as he looks at one down low all tied up and we're in the top half of the sixth and a foul ball Pretty frugal guy. He is very efficient with the pitch count in this one. And oh. another ball. In the air, fairly deep to right field. Marco brings it in. And that quickly two away. Now that second base. Zach McKinstry up McKinstry. now for the Tigers. There's 0 for 2 with a pair of strikeouts. That right. one finds the zone. Strike one. in there that one misses and the count one and two pretty standard high O2 fastball right there if you're smart you look for something down That's in the zone oh. but not too far don't want to chase that breaking ball in the dirt It's a strikeout. Make it six shutout innings for him out there now. And we still have no score. And welcome back to the ballpark. John Shopey with Chris Singleton in the booth and leading off the bottom of the sixth, Christian Vasquez. Pitch. Yeah. Top of the zone, and it's called a strike. It really looks like these hitters have been in between with their timing today. Good fastball, excellent slider, but they've not been able to commit to one velocity and stay there. That one ripped. And it gets into the corner, but it's foul. And down oh. one and two. The pitch. Stays alive. Two. Swing and a miss. And he's down on strikes. One out. 
Came inside with that two-strike yeah. fastball nicely yeah. and just bunched him up yeah. on the inside part of the plate. Couldn't get around yeah. on it and catch it out front. Many times if you do, it's a foul ball. And you know a lot of pitchers, they really don't like working inside with two strikes because they do not want to hit that batter. And when they've got him up against the ropes, got to figure out a way to put him away. Did a nice job right there. Julian in the box now. No balls and a strike. Swings through that one out in front that time. Oh, Man, that's just a nasty splitter. Bottom falls out of it. You don't see a lot of guys throw that these days, the but ball. I tell you what, he's got a good one. One down, base is empty. Ripped to third and caught. Nothing you can do about those as a hitter. Even though you know that, they now still yeah. drive you Nothing absolutely crazy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Ryan Jeffers at the plate. Put in the corner for a strike. One one. The Twins yet to pick up a hit here. In the air to left center. Green going after it. Brings it in for the third out. Back at target field, all set for the start of the inning. Now it's the DH, Kerry Carpenter. And here it comes. Foul ball there. That one lifted to left. Larnick settles under it. He's got it. And there's one down. The the Gio Urshela to the plate. Yeah. Went down Urshela. looking on three pitches last time. Let's see if he can be a little more aggressive right here. There's a strike. Ah. Inside that's, that's just missed. Base is empty one away. Here at the top half of inning number seven. Base is empty. Got it. And there's two away. Well, he's going to have some thinking to do when he leaves the ballpark after this one. That was his How third strikeout. And this one looking, looking obviously. Looking. So he's been a little overmatched. He's got to find a way just to be more competitive up there at the plate. Paris. The batter now as he swings and misses for strike one. Frank. In the on deck circle, you really want to use that opportunity to see some pitches and time up the fastball. Last thing you want to do is miss a good hittable fastball early in the count. Trying to keep good speed off the bases. Battling here as he fouls it away. under it and makes the catch and there's one away seems like the hitters are struggling with their timing today the kind of caught in between that sharp fastball and the nasty slider I'd like to see him settle on a consistent pitch
Buxton oh. up for the third time here watches that one miss you can expect this hitter to be looking for something on a tee he can get up in the air and untie this ball game all tied up here the bottom of the seven next offering oh, upstairs high. Now fly ball to right center. Should have this one. Makes the grab for the second out. No left fielder, number nine. So taking in Trevor Larnick. Still no hits on the board. One out away from taking the no-no into the eight. That one fouled off. And a pitch. In the air, left field, down the line. And he makes the catch. And the inning is over. We're at the top of the eighth, and the batter will be the shortstop, Javier Baez. The short shot. Javier Baez. The wind and the pitch. The shortstop takes the ball. Action in the pen One down ball, there. No Steven Okert preparing to come on if needed. Over. Also throwing. The pitch. Swing and a miss, and it's one and one. one, one. Really consistent release point. He's been able to pitch up and down and have excellent command at both locations. Off the oh. mark there, and that's ball two. <laughs> and there's the strike. Two and two. And another ball. Parker Meadows in the on deck circle. My drive, that's a base hit. So the go ahead run is on base with a knock. That always feels amazing getting a job done when the team needs you to come through. It's just bigger than your own individual stats. And man, I'll tell you, a line drive like that into the gap just feels so good. It's feedback that you had everything on time and in control from start to finish with your swing. Manager out of the dugout now, and it looks like we'll see a change on the mound. Pablo Lopez won't go any further tonight, and we'll be back with their first arm out of the pen after a quick break. On the mound now for the Twins, Steven Okert. He's been so good against lefties. Go ahead, run on base. And next to hit for Detroit, Parker Meadows. One for two. And now the lefty. And a sack bun here. And he grabs it in foul ground. If you're a base runner, you've got to stay dialed in here. Look for anything in the dirt. Try your best to get in the scoring position. Pitch misses there. Now one and two. The two strikes may see some movement over there at first base. Trying to stay out of the double play right here. Bounce to the left side. Dives, but it's off his glove. That leaves it without a throw, and that leaves them with runners at first and second. Back-to-back -back base hits. Now a good opportunity to potentially jump ahead in this game here in the later innings. First and second, no outs. 
Jake Rogers up now for the Tigers. First nope. pitch oh. just misses. Just missing off the plate there, according to the umpire. And out there in the mound, maybe trying to get an explanation. Can't say he's convinced, but it looks like he's accepted it. Yeah. Next offering is in for a strike. Here comes a pitch. Bounding ball here, rolls foul. Go ahead, run at second, and we're in the top of the eighth. And a swing and a miss. And that is a big first out. Definitely made him chase a little bit out of his own right there. I don't think that's a strike if he takes it. Pretty textbook pitching. Get ahead in the count, get the guy in the box on his heels, and then force him to chase your pitch where he doesn't have much of a chance to do any damage. Back to the top of the Detroit order. Here's the left fielder, Riley Green. One for three. Gets the slider in there for a strike. Two now. Ball. One out. The go ahead run is at second. Swung up, popped up left side. No trouble here. Puts it away for the out. And there are two down. The bat out. The first base. Thank you. Now the number two hitter, Spencer Torkelson. In the air, right field. Margot settles under it. Makes the grab. And that's the third out. A couple of hits in the inning, but they can't get him home. Home half of inning number eight straight ahead. And we still have no score. Bottom of the eighth. Now the third baseman, Jose Miranda. And this lineup is still hitless as we begin the eighth. Here the right hander back to work. Misses inside. And that's ball one. This pitcher's done a good job of disrupting the hitter's timing with the mix of pitches and changing speeds. You want to keep that front foot inconsistent for the batter. Their swings are hesitant, and that's exactly what you want on the mound. And a pitch. And a foul ball makes the count two and one. Fouled off. He was late. Kicks and deals. Here's a rocket out to left. In there. And the bid for history is gone. Safe at second with nobody out, and that double has the go-ahead run in scoring position. Tough to see the no-no end here with just six outs to go, Boog, but still a great performance on the mound, and now we'll see if he can get right back to work and go after the next guy. A.J. Hinch makes another pitching change. Casey Mize is done, and it's a tie ball game as he heads for the dugout. Back with a new arm after a quick break. Shelby Miller gets handed the rock out of the pen. And we all know about his slider. It's just filthy, man. And one of the better ones in the game, I'd say. Spin rate's very high, and it just breaks a ton.
Now a move being made at second base. Entering is the pinch runner, Austin Martin. Willie Castro digs in now. Man at second, nobody out. Chris, certainly one of the things in his head is trying to get the runner over. Yeah, the way that we see the game played today, though, guys are not sacrificing as much just to get that runner across. They're really looking at doing damage. Slugging is the name of the game. Yeah, I think part of that goes into it's just so hard to come up with hits. In today's game, starters don't go deep, and so hitters are seeing multiple pitchers every night and that one, makes one. it more challenging just to come up with a single almost Two, got one. him go ahead run in scoring position nobody out here the bottom half of the eighth inning yeah. big swing and a miss as a pitcher no, you know the count. runner on second is ready to push things with this speed a base hit's probably going to be a big run so you really have to execute on the mound in the air out towards left center he's got it runner tagging for third safe he beats it this defense is better than a lot of people think he's a big guy but very athletic right, move as well and that was eight. a very nice play going yeah. back to get it out late in this Mar ball game. So up next for Minnesota, Manuel Margot. And now the runner breaks for the plate. The squeeze, and he gets it down. Well, on to Torkelson, but the go-ahead run comes in to score. Suicide squeeze can be one of the most exciting plays in all of baseball because it's such a layered play, and everything comes together so quickly. Right there, it all came together perfectly at a huge time as they take the lead. So here's Christian Vasquez. That no, misses the down. zone. Ball. Okay, that's ball one. At the belt and fires. Nope, ball. Struggled a little bit in this one. A couple of strikeouts earlier, but doing a much better job in this at bat to get ahead and find a good hitter's count at 2 0. They yeah. say you win. Two balls, one strike. That and one two. finds the zone and out to a two. And another ball. Three and two. Payoff pitch. Out towards right center field. Makes the catch in and over. So that does it for us here in the eighth as the no-hit bid comes to an end. It's the Twins one and the Tigers nothing. So coming into the game now on defense, Austin Martin. He's the new third baseman. Coming out of the bullpen for the Twins, Griffin Jacks. He comes in with a chance for his second save of the season. Well, one run game, Zach McKinstry now at the plate. 0 for 3 with three strikeouts. And he deals. And immediately pumps in a strike to the left handed hitter. Cold night tonight, Boog. And that's a pretty firm fastball right there. I tell you what, memories of getting jammed, they creep it into my mind right now. Hard ground ball, base nine. And that puts the tying run on base. Well, the a big bat, swing bat. of the bat right the there. Bat. Just kept it simple. Great pepper with the middle of the infield and took it back where it came from. And there's just no one there to knock it down. So here's the cleanup hitter, Kerry Carpenter. 0 for 3. A fly out, a ground out, and a strikeout. And that one fouled off. Oh, 
Right handed reliever. On the ground to third. Now it rolls down into the corner. Row cut off. Now to the plate. Tag. Not in time. Safe. It's 1-1. One -one. Huge game tying at bat right there. Came through a big spot to drive in the run. Really good swing right there. He got a pitch that he knew he could handle. Allowed himself to stay back just a tad bit longer. And he hit the ball on the screws. Now a huge at bat in this game coming up. Gio Urshela up now for the Tigers. Three strikeouts already. He's 0 for 3. Little chopper rolls foul. Righty to the plate. And that one fouled off. With the go-ahead run standing at second here at the top of the ninth. Fights that one away, and the count remains 0-2. Well, he knows they don't want to give him anything to hit, but when you've got opportunities to drive in runs, you've got to expand the zone. He's capable of going out there and doing damage with it. And it's second. Wouldn't chase that time. Well, if he's going to do something special right here, it's going to have to happen with two strikes. Rolls across the diamond. Now one gone in the ninth. Those plays can be tricky. They're routine, but that doesn't mean it's always going to be smooth. He delivered a good play right there. So up next, Wenzel Perez. He doesn't get the call. And that is ball one. Righty delivers. Swing and a pop off in foul ground. Puts it away for the out. Up next to the Tiger. The Tiger. Now it's Javier Baez. A strike. The pitch. Check swing. Now he looked down the first. And yes, he did. He went around. Kicks and fires. A little bit oh, high. Yeah, the count one and two. Oh, that's awfully close. I don't know how you take that. He's seeing the ball out of the pitcher's hand really well right now. Out to short. Castro fires the first on the run. Okay. And that is that. <laughs> Tigers grab one on this RBI double. All even now at 1-1. One, one. You're watching Major League Baseball on the show. Back now as they hand the ball to a fresh arm to start the bottom of the ninth. Tyler Holton. And they felt it was time to bring on a left-handed reliever from the pin with the lefty hitter coming up. I think it's a good move. I know I never liked when opposing teams did that to me. Back to the leadoff spot in the Twins lineup. Now it's the, the second, second baseman. baseman. Edouard Julien. They're surprised. Ooh, yeah. We don't see a pinch hitter here with the lefty-lefty matchup. And that one ripped to left, foul ball. down the line, and it's foul. It's good speed at the top of the order here. You want to get it on, see if you can get a stolen base, maybe get around the bases and That's pick a up ball. a run. Activity in the bullpen for Detroit. Reese Olsen getting loose for A.J. Hinch. A 
wind of the pitch. Got him looking. Now one away. Well, we saw a solid effort out of their starter. And now yeah. Ryan is following suit. It's just a good day as a manager or as a pitching coach when you can hand the ball off to multiple arms and get stability from all of their performances. Brian Jeffers, the next twin up to hit. And that's in for a strike. Not one even one. close there. And now it's even one and one. And fouled off. Base is empty one away here in the last half of inning number nine. Here's a one two. That ball is foul and the pressure is building. Knocks that one away, and we'll do it again. One down, base is empty. That's the ball. Pitcher earned that out Number after a 15. long at Number bat. 19. And now for the Twins, Alex Kirilov. Kirilov. You know, this is kind of a tough matchup as a left-handed hitter facing a left-handed pitcher. What you tell yourself is, I want to stay square to the plate and try to hit the ball over the shortstop's head. In the air, right field, Perez drifts towards it. And that will end the inning. Here. Here's the center fielder, Parker Meadows. And the pitch. There's a strike. Extra innings certainly had a different feel starting in 2020 with a new rule placing a runner on second to begin the inning. And that forced teams to rethink their strategy in extra frames. Yeah, much less margin for error. And boo, to your dismay, not much sacrifice bunting. Yeah. Teams usually try for the big inning. Okay. Certainly not that much bunting for the road team as they try and play for the big inning. But for the home team, if the road team doesn't score, you'll see the home team bunt sometimes. the middle Castro on the run throw to first and they get the leadoff man in the 10 the captain number 34 Jake Rogers and now the catcher comes up to him Jake Rogers now first base open really no reason to pitch to this hitter right here put him on have the force at second first perhaps getting any ending double play just no, that, missed. That's the ball. Definitely a strikeout situation right here. Lots of ways for that go-ahead run to score if the ball's put in play. Baez stands at third with one gone in the inning. Pitch yeah. is in there, and it's a ball to strike. It's 
He absolutely crushed that one. No doubt about that one, Boog. We knew it wasn't coming back. Need fast hands to be able to hit that velocity fastball on the inside part of the plate. In my experience, when you're looking out over the plate, allowing the ball to travel, it's pure reaction to hit a pitch in that location. That's a tremendous swing. On the mound now for the Twins, Bailey Ober. He's making his fourth appearance of the season. So the lineup flips over, and up next for Detroit, Riley Green. He swings and fouls one off. And the right-hander deals. Not one ball, close one with that one, and the count is one and one. Still only one out here in the inning. Swing and a miss. Nice changeup. One ball, two strikes. Bounced out to short. Castro sends it to first. He's out. Good slider inside right there. Batter fighting to get there. Just rolled no, over. Got the ground ball. Spencer. And now the first baseman, Spencer Torkelson. Three flyouts already. He's 0 for 3. Swing and a foul over the screen and back out of play. Check swing. Did he go? Yes, he did. 0 and 2. Ball, it stays nothing in two. Two runs across in the inning. You're in extra innings. And there's a ball. Got it swinging for the strikeout. Chase the fastball up the ladder for strike three. Two runs on one hit, the two-run homer. Last chance to even things up, we head to the bottom of inning number 10. It's the Tigers three and the Twins one. Welcome back, and here comes the closer, Alex Lang. Well, he's the guy they hope to turn to out of the pen to lock down wins, so this game has gone to plan, more or less. Let's see if he can wrap it up here. And now the center fielder, Byron Buxton. And things could change quickly here with one swing. The pitch. And that's one down and, and away. Now the no miss. Well, an interesting situation. One swing, you can tie up the ball game. But if you're patient and work a walk, then you bring the game-winning run to the plate. Tying run at the plate. That's yeah. in there, and it's 2-1 and one now. And another ball. I just feel like he's frustrated a little bit. He wants to be challenged. Trevor Larnick up next. Three one. Fought off foul. Payoff pitch. That one misses. So a leadoff walk. Pretty much the last thing you want from your bullpen arms are free passes, Lead especially in spots like this. Yeah. Make the team no, run their way off. And next for Minnesota, Trevor no. Larnick. 0 for 3 with two flyouts and a strikeout. Two 
to first, maybe a two ball. Goes to second for one. Back to first, double play. 3 6 3, nicely done. I mean, that's one of the toughest double plays to turn on the infield. The first baseman has to get inside, create a throwing lane to hit that middle infielder to start the double play, and then from there, completing it back to first. Really good job all the way around. So it's their last chance in this one. Here's the rookie third baseman, Austin Martin. Just so that missed. That's the ball. 1 0. The tying run at the plate. Hello. Swings over the top of that one. One and one. Wouldn't That's chase that time. Two balls, one strike. Two outs. Right. They're down to their final strike. The Twins down to their final strike. Sends it to center, and this should be it. And that'll do it. The Tigers claim the win here behind some great pitching and defense. Well, this is a big win on the road and going extras into 10. Uh, so hard to pull those out, but I think this team did a great job of keeping the crowd out of the ball game late. When you can do that, it kind of calms everything down, keeps the adrenaline of the opposing team down a bit, and you can steal a win and get out of here happy. And your final 3-1 for Chris Singleton and our entire outstanding crew here at MLB The Show. I'm John Shambi. We'll see you soon.